I spoke to the waitress. She said she'd tell me what she knew about budgies if I'd tell her what I knew about the 1958 Balkan Cup final. I stalled for time, knowing that if I told her what I knew, there'd be no reason for keeping me alive. My life wouldn't be worth a... Yeah, all right, sir. Uh, just let me know when you got it fixed, okay? It was Red Star Sarajevo, wasn't it? What? Won the 1958 Balkan Cup final. Nah, Sarajevo was 57. That was when Chipstick scored from the avenue of the Revolutionary Martyrs' end in extra time. I know, I know, it's a trick question. Hang on, hang on, hang on. 58 was the year that the entire El San Dynamo team was purged at half-time for bourgeois deviation and the game was declared void by People's Tribunal. No, wrong again. That was in the destalinization knockout friendly. The 58 Balkan Cup was the one where Bosnia Wednesday beat Tirana Academicals 15-0 after an intervention by the Red Army. Oh no. Tricked by her devious cunning. Everything I knew about the 1958 Balkan Cup final was now hers. My life was worthless. With an evil glint in her eye, she pulled out a pale handled Born and Hollingsworth 33 automatic with optional cosy fit barrel warmer and a choice of trigger guards in a range of contemporary colours. She pointed it in my direction. I looked her straight in the eye. Hand over the gun, I yelped, in a voice as cool as I could muster. You know damn well you'll never use it. Wouldn't I, she hissed. Kiss the good times goodbye, Mr. Sales, she spat, and say hello to eternity. Her fingers squeezed the trigger. The room was filled with the acrid smell of burning cordite. My chest tightened with a dull pain. I slumped to the ground. Is this the end for Alexei? At moments like this, I say a silent prayer to the Swedish anti-nuclear lobby. Fortunately, I was wearing my Atomcraft Nedge Tack badge directly over my hat and the... Alexei, you've blown it! Eh? You've started the script for episode four. You've let the cliffhanger ending. Oh, yeah, well, fuck it. Look, the whole point of the thing was that we were supposed to have them on the edge of their seats, panting with anticipation for the next episode, to find out whether you were dead or alive, and you've blown it! it. Land Rover Shepard turns it to bed. Metro. Till the end, Jaguar Viva. A gentle warfare, Renault 20. Oh no. Vitesse and G and Lotus Turbo. Take my Metro to the disco. Get in my car and we'll go go. Take my Metro to the disco. With my foot down, there's no go slow. Okay, fantastic. Welcome back to Radio Milton Springsteen. And this week we've got the winners of the Write the Song about Milton Springsteen competition. And it's the jam. And that's Milton Springsteen. Yes! <laughs> Oh, 
tell you before actually um chris has got this sort of um sort of itch oh yeah um what sort of an itch are we ready to go now uh, yeah okay but um w what's this about an itch there was an acrid smell of burning cordite but thanks to the Swedish anti-nuclear lobby, I was still alive. The bullet had bounced off the atom craft Nedge tack badge I always wore over my hat. Furthermore, the ricochet knocked the gun out of my assailant's hand and into mine. <laughs> the velvet glove seems to be on the other hand. I drivelled. Don't shoot, she said. Violence is not on my map, I simpered. You never asked to be bad, kid. You're just a victim of this chemical toilet we laughingly call society. Ha! If anybody needs shooting round here, it's the government, the status quo, the media barons, and the forces of international capital. Capital Radio, 194. <coughs> Alexei, are you sure that these simplistic political messages you stick in from time to time will see us all right with the music press? Yes, stupid fuckers. <laughs> Oh, by the way, um, about this itch, uh, could you be a bit more specific? Yeah, Chris says it's non-specific. Okie dokie, and a cue. Look, kid, I stated arithmetically. Tell me what you know about the budgie, and I'll try and keep this whole matter out of the hands of the social workers. Her eyes glowed with gratitude, and she cracked immediately. Victor Grass is the man you want, she confessed. He hangs out at the El Erotica pet shop. With extreme difficulty, I congered over to the El Erotica pet shop and spoke to Vic. I said Midnight Express. He said that'll do nicely. He stood up, cleared his throat, and without ceremony sang the song of the revolutionary stool pigeon in a literal translation from the original German. When we had ransacked the homes of the landowning classes, when we had drunk their fine wine and admired their expensive porcelain fixtures and fittings, five of us sat down in one of the landowning classes' rooms, adjoining but not adjacent to the main reception rooms, and we discussed the aims and tactics of the new order. The first was a foot soldier who had seen many campaigns. The second was a coach chandler who had chandled many a call. The third was an account executive with small but expanding advertising agency. The fourth was a humanities lecturer with a keen understanding of multicultural studies. And the fifth, the fifth, the fifth was a stool pigeon. A revolutionary stool pigeon, Scott the soldier. The rest concurred, scoffing, mocking, and laughing in their respective ways. A revolutionary stool pigeon. Such a thing is surely a contradiction in terms. The words that the stool pigeon felt thick in gave me the dope I needed on Hardiman the budget. Hardiman was bright. He spoke seven languages, could recite the dates and birthplaces of the most important members of the Bloomsbury group, wrote sonnets, had learnt by heart, and what's more, could understand the lyrics of Elvis Costello, advised the government on economic policy, and once designed a cage for Lord Snowden. He was bright, and he was talkative. Perhaps he was too talkative for Big Ralph. Trouble was, he blabbed in the wrong places about... Suddenly, Vic's eyes glazed over and blood showed at his lips. The, uh, the fish uh, people... Uh, he gasped. 